In this edition of Venery Secrets, we're going to be talking about ticks and dogs, what you can do to prevent them, and how to remove them if your dog happens to get one. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Today's episode comes to you from Todos Santos in Mexico. I'm here in the Baja Peninsula. And on vacation with my family, it's been a wonderful vacation. We're coming to the end. We're staying in this lovely little casa at the edge of the town in this great little uh, Mexican neighborhood. Um, in it though, there just happens to be also some neighborhood dogs. There is a specific neighborhood dog that goes by the name of Cinnamon, who the owner has left a little information sheet about, said she, she comes to visit. Sure enough, she came to visit. Here's the comida for her, so they even have food that they occasionally give her. So you guys, this here is Cinnamon. She's this little girl. She's kind of a shepherd lab, sort of Mexican cross, kind of like a Kootenai cross, but probably a range of different breeds that has been able to adapt to sort of survive with kind of a variety of different foods to be able to deal with some of the ongoing parasites. She's got fleas, she has ticks. And you know, I couldn't help it. She comes to the house, you know, we'd love to give her attention. She's a sweet, wonderful dog. Um, but, you know, I gave her the exam, she's got ticks. I've taken some of the ticks off. So a couple things. First of all, I wanted to show you how to properly remove a tick. She's got ticks on her now. Secondly, a little bit of a discussion about tick prevention and sort of what may be best for you, your dog, your situation. Ticks in general, they love to be up in here, places where your dogs can't get to. So sort of up in here behind her ears. And last night, that's where I just took two big sort of engorged ticks off. Um, we've since done a bit better an exam of her and there's more ticks on her now. So I'm gonna give you a close up. There's one here on her shoulder right now. Whoa, look how big my head is. So here on top of her sh right up here on top of her shoulder blade in between my hands you can should be able to see the tick pretty clearly right there so there he is there engorged feeding um, so likely what we're dealing with is called the brown dog tick it's probably the more common species of tick that also just so happens uh, to be in semi-tropical tropical countries transmitting disease common disease it's transmitting is called ehrlichia um, or ehrlichiosis so it's a, a tick-borne parasite uh, that attaches to the white blood cells. Um, and for the majority of guys in Ehrlichia, initially it causes a, a range of issues, but initially there's an acute infection where you can get dogs are fever, have sick. The biggest thing they'll have enlarged lymph nodes, they come and see the veterinarian. Often on blood tests, they have markedly low platelet count. Um, that can be pretty sort of diagnostic. You got this dog who's got a tick, got some of these secondary signs. Um, in many of the places now, we can actually do either tests for antibodies to Ehrlichia and or do a specific DNA test to confirm that disease or not. So the big thing with these guys is you want to, ideally you've got some type of instrument, even tweezers or something. What you're wanting to be doing is just grab them right at the base, right where they're attached to your dog's skin. And you don't want to use things like a lighter or anything else. You want to grab them, pull them straight out, and then squishing them with something else, not your fingers, so you don't potentially get anything or infect it. So with my fingernails, I'm just going to grab the base of this thing right here, right at the skin, just slowly pull with a little bit of the skin, slowly pulling it straight out. Pretty firmly attached. There you And look at that, it's got a couple little friends attached, pull them out too. So there's that little sort of red lesion on her where the ticks were. So there they are, there's three small ones, see them crawling there, my finger is there, there's a the large adult. So I'm just going to use the back of my phone, they say the best thing is to not go ahead and squish them. 
Just ideally you're not using your finger. You can just squish them with, I don't know, a rock, whatever. Just so you don't get infected. Looks like the back of my phone case works pretty well. They're a little ticky. So, it's a phone case, and it also doubles up as a tick killer. Uh, this area of Mexico, where you know it's not just tropical, there's a fair amount of palm trees, obviously a moderate amount of water. I mean, this is a sort of ideal tick environment, hence that's why we have Cinnamon, who's got all these ticks on her in the first place. So that's the single biggest thing. One's daily checking your dog. That would be ideal. The, ne the next thing, you can consider some of those sort of natural preventives as a possibility. Um, the one, so we're looking at some of these essential oils. Primarily, you want to be looking at one with cedarwood oil as a spray. That's something you're going to have to look at doing daily to your dog. So, for light misting, using a flea comb to spread it through your dog. Um, the big thing there, though, it's got to be done daily. And I think for many, many of you, honestly, I think the, the single biggest thing is just daily checking your dog without having to use that you know, topical as well. But feel free to do so, especially if you're in an area such as here. Then the third big thing is you know, really considering you know, some of these um, insecticides. One called Brevecto now can be given once every three months. It can be given orally once as a, to as a topical. Um, there's other ones you know, such as um, Advantix, such as you know, Comfortis. I mean, there's a variety of different ones now that will do, actually do fleas and ticks. She also got, has fleas as well. Are those ideal? No, they're not. Do I think they sort of outweigh the risk, though, of some of these tick-borne diseases, such as Ehrlichia, such as Babesia? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think, you know, her having to deal with it on an ongoing basis, not treated, is so much worse than, you know, any of the concerns around uh, the insecticide toxicity. It's been a super great vacation here. Um, I've loved um, getting to know so, so many of the different people here in Mexico. It's been a great experience, uh, minus maybe the scorpion in my uh, son's room last night and all the ticks here. Thanks you guys for watching this edition of Enter Secrets. I'd love for you to give a thumbs up here to Cinnamon. Good girl. I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe to my channel. And lastly, click that link directly in the box below. Then when you do that and you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books and my free videos and I'd heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.